So hi everybody, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Happy to be here with all of you. Uh, so this is uh, our last uh, um, session on the sleep yoga practice. So it's amazing, uh, time passes very fast. And uh, I know like, uh, but the time passes very fast, but in a good way that we all have been very, very engaged with the practices of sleep yoga. And uh, it's amazing to see how many people uh, are like very, very committed and uh, very engaged uh, with the practice and, and sharing beautiful experiences. And also, I wanted to thank you all, all your uh, very sweet uh, and very kind words toward my work. And uh, definitely, I trying to do my best. Um, and it's not only me, uh, behind me, uh, there's a big team of people, um, you know, at least like uh, 25, 30 people are involved in making these things happen. So uh, it looks like a simple, but uh, it, it takes a lot of energy, time and effort and a lot of people's uh, undivided, very dedicated uh, commitment and uh, dev uh, devotions like that. <clears throat> so, so I'm very happy to, you know, like uh, the good news is that uh, uh, even though it's a uh, sleep yoga is finished, but we are not ending the Facebook live. We will continue to do uh, Facebook live teaching. And uh, the only thing that will change is I, I realize it's kind of very difficult to do twice a week. And uh, particularly it's a difficult when I am traveling, like when I was in Dharamsala, India, um, you know, uh, with a jet lag and then um, I eat like around uh, eight or seven or eight, between seven and eight. And then um, I was, uh, uh, my wife, uh, she went to sleep and so, and uh, everybody in the hotel seems like going to sleep and I have to, wait until 11 in the night in the lobby, very quiet, small lobby, and uh, sitting in front of the cam uh, camera and, uh, and uh, waiting for two hours because I've committed to do at the same time. So I'm following, talking before even talking about the sleep yoga practice, I'm going like following sleep. <laughs> Uh, waiting to for the lab, webcast and then I have to before f five minutes before I have to go to the restroom to get some cold water to wake me up completely before I <laughs> begin to speak. So so this kind of was, was a little bit challenging and also in Nepal was a little bit challenging. So so what I'm saying is I will continuously do one time, so that means every Tuesday, same time. Uh, but uh, the question and answer will be more spontaneous uh, whenever I feel fresh, weak, and uh, and if I feel there is something that I need to say by reading and reading in the comments of people, then I will spontaneously do some uh, some question and answers. Uh, but if I feel like uh, everybody seems like they're doing fine, then maybe I don't need to just speak, right? So, so I will skip. So I will take this freedom to uh, not do. So, so, so we, this is the as I said, this is our last uh, sleep yoga um, practice. So this is a practice or the the question and answer, uh, sleeping with awareness, dying without fear. We spoke quite a bit last last week. And so how is your practice going on? So uh, how sleeping with the awareness, how, how is going on with the sleeping with awareness? I know there are some questions regarding to that. I will, I will uh, speak a little bit about that. And can you see, can you imagine uh, sleeping with awareness it's possible sleeping with that uh, being the awareness of that space is possible 
as sleeping with some deep sense of confidence of view, what we call tawiyeting, confidence of view, confidence of self-confidence, uh, is possible. If these all are possible, then maybe regaining some confidence in life, in, in yourself, and through those confidence, maybe bigger challenges, it's okay, uh, small challenges, it's no problem, and maybe even the idea of dying is not comfortable, but not problematic. So, so how is it going? How, how you all are you feeling? So, uh, it would be nice to get some feedback. And um, so, yeah, before I continue, I just wanted to say that uh, um, as this is the last session of the sleep, the next um, the dream yoga will continue May 30th. Uh, May 30th, Tuesday, same time, uh, noon, New York time. So I know like uh, Mariela is uh, there that you can see chat host. It uh, will give you more link and information, all the details about, about the program. But uh, next one will continue on the May 30th on Tuesday. But before that, there will be a conversation with the uh, physicist, uh, Amit uh, Goswami. Um, so uh, on, that will be on May 11th, Wednesday. Uh, yeah, so the May, no, sorry, the May 24th. May, uh, Wednesday, May 24th, 12 noon. So that will be a very interesting here published book. He has been appeared in a, now I don't even remember that, one of the movies. And uh, so I'm very much looking forward. Uh, so I, I uh, will encourage all of you to write down the date, May, 20, May 24th, Wednesday, 12 noon. So then, after that, um, the whole whole continuation of the Dream Yoga uh, Facebook Live will start. So uh, next May thirtieth, Tuesday. So so this is all for the information, so that uh, everybody know uh, that this is not the end. This is uh, it's our end of the sleep, but we will continue to do the Dream Yoga, and in the same way for whole two months, so I mean, forgot to mention that, whole two months, and in, in between, we hope to have uh, at least two speakers to come and have a conversation, and one will be Stephen Labarge, uh, who is a uh, uh, um, very well-known uh, dream and researcher at, at Stanford University, and he also wrote a book called Lucid Dreaming, and so, uh, uh, I'm also soon having conversation, the end of the month having conversation with him, so we were going to prepare well, so and see how to organize this to able to do our conversation life well. So, so these are all like a little bit new, ice, new items, uh, and uh, so I hope that all you remember what's going on. So now going back to the practices so there are few people few people have asked questions um so one of the question is really like uh so there are in the sleep yoga practice and also in a dream yoga practice there are so many different uh, pieces of practices in there so uh, and um i know like uh, even Dzogchen, many Dzogchen teachings and higher tantric teachings and and particularly um, uh, in a maju, like a t uh, in a sleep dream yoga text, and Shaza Tashi Janse who who achieved the body of light, rainbow body, who his text, and so on. So there are so many different areas of the practice, and all of those different areas of the practices obviously equally important, but depends on each individual, person to person, depends. It depends on that. So, so I, what I'm trying to say here is that. Um, so, the, some question was that you know there were so many different aspects of the practices. What should I do? 
So this is a very good question. So in a way, it's the same. The, it applies the same thing. People ask same thing during the waking state. People say, "I have received so many transmissions. I have received so many initiations. I have re received so many teachings. I have done so many practices and during so many retreats. Now, what should be I doing? What should be I doing?" And people say, even my little sister, one time she said she she practices uh, two different. One, one deity, one guardian and protector, and she said if she, she said she has to do both. She does. She feels like if I, she does not do one, then the other goddess will be upset. Or oh, today she ignored me or something like that. So people begin to think that way. So it's it's not. Don't think that way. So I think the main thing is that what you understand, your your level of understanding. And your level of experience, your level of realization, your level of comfort uh, should be the place. So you feel comfortable enough uh, to, and you feel also effect and result enough. And if you feel good, if your practice is working, then don't even ask what else to do. Do what is working, what is helping you. You don't have to change the sake of changing something. You don't have to change. If it's working, continue. So that will be my recommendation. Then, of course, if you are, you know, wanted to be very specific, and then there's of course Tibetan Yoga of Dream and Sleep. The whole book is there. It's been translated over 20 languages, so that you, I'm sure, it's one of your languages. It's, it's available, and uh, yeah, so. So and also I wanted to mention that during our sleep uh, dream yoga practice, uh, dream yoga Facebook live uh, on beside there, uh, the Glide Wing will be offering also online workshop. This is uh, 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 some of my friends who uh, has their online teaching company, which they provide wonderful services. And as many of you know, they provide they help me to help many people to provide organizing with their own time and energy, providing those online Shine workshop and online uh, Haisei workshop, uh, um, the pain, they're totally supported with the research in the pain. So all those, they are doing the volunteering uh, support there. But this part on a Dream Yoga, of course, is not um, free, so you, uh, it's, it's a paid, a workshop, but it's also very important. There is a lot of uh, more structures in in the planning, and there's a little bit more people. Who, it will be more good to people who are more familiar and a little bit more advanced. Knowing something already will be recommended. So, so you have this free Facebook Live. You have uh, the paid uh, online workshop. So there's a lot of options here. Uh, what I'm trying to say here. So that now. Another question they were asked about somebody t talking a little bit about, you know, practicing before you go to sleep, and then the practices of awareness of the light. So light, uh, focusing on the light, um, feeling that luminosity, and feeling a kind of strong sense of light. When she says when she feels strong sense of light, then it's like a, a very hard to fall asleep. And uh, wake up a number of times and in the morning feel very, very exhausted. And then uh, when she does, not focusing so much on the light, and then uh, sleeps better, let, in, let interruption in the sleep. And then in the morning, morning she wakes up, she, she, she feel much more rested in, the, uh, in her body and her mind. So, so basically asking what to do. So I think. Uh, it's the same thing again, as I said earlier, that um, if you feel like a light, able to not focus too much on the light, uh, or at least maybe idea of dim the light down, it's a luminous but not too bright to interfere your sleep, and uh, then uh, also in terms of your awareness and focus should be more resting and relaxing uh, attention, focus, rather than effort or focus. So you're trying to more rest, 
So the main thing is, of course, the sleep yoga and the dream yoga practice is you're trying to go to sleep. You're trying to uh, go to have a dream. So you do not want to put any effort, uh, too, too much effort in the light or in generally effort so which interferes. So I think, you know, like one time, I remember one time we in the Serenity Ridge at Lingmicha Institute, we organize once a year Buddhism and Science Conference. This is what we begin to call Spirituality and Science Conference now, and uh, because it's not limited to one tradition. And so, so during the conversation, one of the presenter was actually doing a research on some sense of uh, effect, a, a negative effect of meditation on some people. So sometime. Uh, that happens obviously people have done they have done researches and so it happens so it's not that meditation has a negative impact uh, it's more like a when person is not uh, able to um, understand fully able to focus in a right way then sometimes it can have effort so it's not only a meditation how, how many people how many of you got injured in a gym working out how many people got injured bicycling how many people got injured running so how many people got injured doing like a rough physical movement same principle so if you if you force your body if you force your muscle if you force your breath if you force your prana if you force your mind if you force your body it's going to have a negative impact so one should never ever force your body, your speech, your mind, your prana, your relationship, yourself, your breath, your work, your creativity, no force. There's no place for force in any situation for Dzogchen practitioner. If we, we, if we are thinking about ourselves as a Dzogchen practitioner, no force, no effort. Okay? So that's simple, simple rule, a simple, I know sometimes we have a difficulty to uh, even we put effort to not put effort we think of not thinking um, we have this is a lifetime we have been putting effort in every single thing and when it comes to the meditation we end up doing the same thing not any different so we know that that's our problem so so but but and again i think it's a good that reminding oneself that no force, no effort, and do practice which is working, and practice is not working, pay attention to, attention to it, uh, just to understand, understand, go deep, more learn more what is not working. So that's all, I think, uh, uh, the most important part. So maybe uh, let's uh, do a short meditation here. So I would like to all of you to uh, just uh, for a moment, stop clicking the hearts and thumbs and <laughs> everything. Just uh, bring your full attention inward. Just breathe out, at least consciously breathe out five times, count them, at least be aware of them, so, so that you do at least five deep breathing and breathe it out, all the tensions, discomfort, any effort that you're experiencing this moment. Breathe out and breathe in deep, deep enough, deeper than usually you breathe. Feel the breath, the prana is reaching more deeper part of your body, your organs than usual. Feel that, like feeling the breathing from your heart, breathing from your lung, breathing from your different organs. So breathing deeper.
Now, be aware of your body. Connect to your body. Specifically, be aware of the stillness and we are all connected to the Cyber Sangha this very moment. We are one in that sacred space, one in that stillness. We are collectively experiencing that stillness through our body. We are all supporting each other. We are all connected to each other. Be aware of the silence in you, around you, with all the Cyber Sangha. Feel it. Hear it. Be aware of it and connect, rest peacefully in that awareness of silence. Be aware of the spaciousness, the openness of your mind or your heart. Feel the openness. Be aware of that openness. Be aware of that sacred space. Allow your body to fully rest. Any holding, tension, effort, let it drop to the bottom. Let it go. 
any effort in your mind, let it go. Allow your body, speech, mind to fully rest in its deepest, spacious place. To simply be aware in your body, in speech and mind, if there is any effort, tension, anywhere, be aware of that. Breathe it out as you're breathing out. Deep breathing out. And in the end of the exhalation, just f as you fully breathe it out, rest for a second. Feel the connection to that base. Breathe in gently. Breath of awareness. The breath of light. So remember the breathing, the light, the breathing, breath of awareness or the breath of light means same thing. So you're sending out light and transforming everything into light, breathing in light, every, transforming everything in your body, particularly your sickness, pain, blockages, obscurations identity, pain identity, all dissolves into the light. Either visually imagining light going in and out, which is recommended, but also at the same time, just being aware of every move and every step of the breath, because the awareness itself is actually the light. So breathe awareness, breathe light, rest deeper, allow to follow sleep.
Okay. Now gradually you can open your eye. So how was how was your meditation? Now can you, this is like the simplest version of thinking about the practice, then um, of course, as I said, there's so many different ways you can do it. You know, uh, last weekend I was in Vienna, Austria, and, uh, and somebody said that uh, imagining the deity was very, very helpful and felt very protected. Uh, absolutely, you know, we we do that in a dream yoga, sleep yoga practices. We we uh, juma chemo. It's the dream dakini of the dream yoga, and saljit dudalma is the dakini of the sleep yoga, and uh, and then the the guardian as a protector of the green goddess. The appearance is similar. Green goddess. It's a protector guardian. So you imagine that you. You are surrounded by a beautiful, motherly, loving, um, also strong, very protective uh, goddesses when you go to sleep. And many of them, imagine. And of course, some people will feel like fantastic. That's the greatest idea, you know, to have have all these goddesses around. Imagine, and in real science also, have all the imagine all the goddesses and really actively um, protecting you, guiding you, how beautiful that is. And, and uh, also imagine uh, one's own teacher or teachers, um, guardians and protectors, imagine being present in your room with you as you fall asleep, and basically putting you to sleep, how beautiful that is. And, but for some people to imagine the goddess is too much. They can imagine demons, that's not a problem. But when they have to imagine goddess, why goddess? God, is goddess real? Uh, can goddess really help? Is it, am I not making up with my mind? Is it something very Tibetan? Is it something really helpful for Westerners? It's in my culture, we don't have the goddess like that. You can go go on and on and on with all those conceptualization, uh, thoughts, reasoning, which just affect you negatively. If you if you cannot not use logic, reasoning, then use the logic and reasoning which helps you, heals you, shows you path, guides you, not what which destroys you, which discourages you. With doubts, puts you doubt, more doubts. There's no, no good reason to do that, right? But of course, it's easier to say than do. So I'm sure we know that. So, so Im imagining the, all the those possible, then also syllables that um, seed syllables like uh, the seed syllable of goddesses, warrior seed syllable, seed syllable syllables like a uh, Hum, these sacred seed syllables are also visualized in, in the process of going to go to sleep. And these seed syllables are considered as uh, armor, uh, protect, protects you. Basically, uh, like a A, uh, like Om, and Hum, and Ram, and Za, A, uh, Yang, all these different sacred seed syllables are like, uh, like a guardian, like a protector, armor, basically that if you wear the armor, when the negativity comes, you are protected. When you are not have or not wear the armors but, um, for protections, then when the negativity arises, they affect you. And so, so basically, um, syllables are, have important role in the sleep and dream yoga practice, in every practices. So the deity has a place, syllables have a place, Prayers have a place, 
masters have a place, breathings have a place, positions of the body has a place. And so there's so many aspects have a place for that. The question is how much you are willing to, you are open to understand, willing to apply and, and you know, open to have experiences. So which is very much depend on each individual. So that, so, so there's a, basically, if you do what you can, just as simple practices, what we did just now, I think that everybody can do. I hope that everybody can do. Nobody has a complaint about that. So if you can do that every night before you go to sleep, you, you are fine. And you give, take your time to learn more open. And as you experience, learn more, go deeper and learn in, in terms of the texts and practices, learn more and more as you become more advanced. So you have enough time. So if we manage to, uh, in maybe how many lifetime, at least this lifetime, all last 20, 30 years, manage to sleep uh, without doing any sleep yoga practice, without you doing any dream yoga practice, messing up every night, he managed to survive doing that, but I'm sure you'll be fine to do something, some practices. If you're not able to, what I call it during the practices, if you're not able to charge yourself, not drain yourself. So that's, remember that. If you're not able to charge yourself, at least not drain yourself. Uh, like a phone, if you don't find a place to plug and charge your phone, but then stop playing videos and stop uh, using navigation system, especially when you don't need one, uh, because navigation system, searching, 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 looking for something, looking for something, looking for connection, loses a lot of energy because you don't find when you look for connection, when you can find the connection when you be. When you are being, you are connected. When you look for connection, you lose the connection. So you lose the energy. So, so basically, not drain. If, even if you're not able to charge, at least not drain yourself. If you're not able to do all these beautiful practices, at least not, not have negative, uh, negative uh, thoughts, and uh, negative emotions before you go to sleep, at least do something. If you can take a shower, if you can brush your teeth, you can do something with your mind too. Uh, because taking a shower, uh, t brushing your teeth, uh, putting on some creams, night creams, whatever you're doing or making your, um, using your blankets, comfortable blankets, finding it, trying to find your, this, your favorite position. If you're able to have time to do and have a, and, and uh, I say, uh, you put enough attention to be aware of those things, then you can also do something with your mind. That's what I recommend. Okay, so so this is all for today. So uh, last reminder, remind, a reminder here is uh, Wednesday, May 24th, 12 p.m. New York time, uh, conversation with a physicist. Amit Goswami, Dr. Amit Goswami, and then our continuation of dream yoga practices will be start May 30th, Tuesday, every Tuesday, uh, noon New York time, same way like what we have been doing. It will continue for two months. On beside that, there will be also, this is all, Facebook is all free, then there is also Glide online glide wind workshop also if you're interested. So so please, uh, I first first of all I want to thank everybody who really like I, I am so surprised some of people are very very active on a on a comment there was like a f five six seven hundred comments or something like that. It's amazing that how uh, active engaging all you have been. This is a um, this is a very very encouraging for me to see your engagement, your participation, your braveness of sharing your personal experiences on Facebook. You see, uh, Facebook is another way to open, break through our fears and open up. Uh, even for me, when I was first time teaching, I have to break through my fear to teach on, to talk on a Facebook. 
and not knowing who I'm talking to. So you to share something like that, I'm sure you go through the same experiences, but now we, we sometimes went beyond that. And, um, and also I wanted to express my gratitude, people who has been sharing these teachings and informations about these teachings with all your family and your friends. This is uh, very helpful for us because uh, all our effort we feel um, very satisfying when, when many people are helping us to reach more people that we know not only we are doing but all of you are equally participating to, uh, for outreach. So I encourage you all of you to help us to outreach more and particularly now the Dream Yoga practice will be coming end of the month so we have some time here so I would like uh, ask everybody to uh, help to you know let other people know all these uh, uh, programs and the plannings uh, the teachings that what we're going to do so thank you Thank you. Thank you, Balbina. Mikhail, thank you. Leslie, thanks. Monique, Joanna. So, everybody, thank you, thank you. And thank you for all the people who helped translate, organize, uh, TWR Facebook Live team. They have been, last couple of days, been very, very busy preparing for the next uh, Dream Yoga um, teachings on online, Facebook online. Thank you, thank you. So good night, everybody, sleep well. <laughs>